she is about to uh, develop milk from the breast for the infant and so on. So the, that hormone put out by the pituitary gland rises. But we, after uh, lactation, after breastfeeding and so on, it goes back to normal. In the populations where breast cancer is very low or almost unknown, prolactin level normally is reasonably low in women. In our country, it's always high in women. And if you take women in our country, and Dr. Ernst Winder has done this, and he's had a study with our own population here, uh, where they come in on the first day and we take blood values and we take it four weeks later. Dr. Winder has found if you take American women on the normal high-fat diet and they have high prolactin levels, you put them on the low-fat, low-cholesterol diet, and in a very short time, the prolactin levels drop down to that of Japanese women. That is, since Japanese women only have 10% of the rate of breast cancer as U.S. women, in effect, you've dropped their breast cancer risk 90% by changing their diet. So we've got a lot of things to say about diet change in relation to cancer. Not only colon cancer, not only lung cancer, which we always thought was strictly caused by cigarettes, and now we see how important it is to drop cholesterol level, but also in breast cancer. And the tragedy of breast cancer it might be reflected in the statement that Dr. Ernst Winder made before the Senate hearings on nutrition, when he said, in this country, if we could drop the fat and cholesterol in the diet down to levels such as our diet recommends, three principal cancers could disappear in this country, colon cancer, prostate cancer, and breast cancer. And breast cancer is the number one cause of death in women 35 to 55 years old. It's such a tragedy that we have to wait for these deaths and the suffering to happen before we make dietary changes. But we don't have to worry longer because we know now what to do, and there's nothing to stop us from making these changes, and we ought to do them today.